Phil, I, <laughs> you blow me away with your words uh, and your heart behind them. You need to know that it's that heart that that changed me. It's it's that type of character and kindness that can only come from the spirit to love like that in the midst of slander. Um, what, I mean, it's, I was one of those guys uh, coming out of seminary. I was one of those guys. I've told Mike Bickle, I studied you in seminary. <laughs> you know, I, first time I met him. I was, I said yes to going to one thing, but I, there was a fear in me. And, you know, Mike, you remember, I, maybe, I, I remember just sitting him down and I just had all these questions for him because the moment I said yes to speaking there, there was just a barrage of criticism and people so angry that I would even consider. And, and so I'm like, whoa, you know, and then I remember the things that I studied and, and even one of my staff people, his mom came to our office in tears saying, please say it isn't so, you know, and, but you, you need to understand, I came from this world where I, I just blatantly, when Mike, when you said that, um, Bill had never, from his staff's mouth, they've never heard him speak negatively uh, about another minister, or pastor, or believer. Uh, that could not be said of me. I used to ridicule anyone who spoke in tongues, anyone who thought he had a gift of prophecy. I really did. And the thing about it is, and this is why, I'm so glad you have such a heart toward these people. I really thought I was doing it for God. Some, you, you don't know what you don't know. And in my mind, I, I mean, when someone would say a phrase like uh, this charismatic theologian, I just thought that's an oxymoron. There's no charismatic theologians. They don't even study the word. They, they just dream and have visions. I mean, that's really what I believe. So I thought I will protect the church from these people who are getting away from the word of God and just chasing their fantasies. And I've got to save the church from them. So I don't think I was evil. I, 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 I know I was arrogant, like off the charts arrogant, but there was almost this side of me that felt like, God, I'm doing this for you. And what changed me was I was on this board uh, with this guy named Jack Hayford, and um, which I was nervous about and didn't was uncomfortable being on there, but it was for the poor. So as I got to know him and I got to see his character, I thought, oh my gosh, the love he had for people who were attacking him. That's what changed me. I apologized to him. And from that point on, it was like this openness of, man, when he, when Jack started teaching the word of God, that's when it was so humbling. He was using the heap. I mean, I just thought, okay, here we go. What vision did you have today? He got into the word, Greek, Hebrew, in a way that was so humbling. And that mixed with his character and love and compassion, it, it really changed this arrogant, uh, I need to fight against all these people. And so... When I hear your heart, Bill, man, I sure hope there are people listening that maybe come from the camp I came from. And I will tell you this, when I went to meet with Bill, I, I'm not Bill, uh, I get all your charismatics mixed up. Um, I got to meet with you, Mike, and 
question you on all of these things that were written about you and you just very calmly lovingly just showed me how they weren't true and i'm like why didn't you say anything why didn't you defend yourself and you're just like the spirit told me not to god told me not to i'm not going to disobey him and talking to your staff and and then when i found out how much you studied the word of god um, and now you're telling me that Asher is a teacher to you. I'm going, oh gosh, I'm sitting here just so humbled, so embarrassed when I found out because there are a lot of people from the camp that I come from and we really, I, I do see a lot of people who love, love, love the Lord and but I just never thought through, like, why am I so sure that I'm right? Um, even now, even before we got on the call today, I said, God, please help me. Because sometimes when I'm with a group of people, there's this feeling of superiority. Like, I need to go and fix their theology. Even when I went to one thing, there was some of that in me. I'm just telling you that I'm going to fix some of these things. I'm going to correct some of this, you know, uh, poor thinking. And then when I got there, I was just so humbled going, just like I was with Hayford, going, this guy knows the word of God better than I do. So what? So we have disagreements. Okay, I'll just let you guys know, even in our last two Zoom calls, I've heard something come out of each of your mouths that I disagree with. I think you're wrong, <laughs> you know, but now I have the wisdom to go, well, what makes me right? Am I sure I'm more intelligent than these men or wiser than these men? Or is it, you know, because I've studied the scriptures, I know it's not all about intellect, but it's about God's spirit of truth revealing these things. So then am I right because the spirit is closer to me and I'm more in tune with the Holy Spirit than you guys? Or then I think, no, the Bible says God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Oh, it's because I'm more humble than these guys that I know more than them or I have the right interpretation and God pours his grace out on me. Now, after meeting you and Mike, seeing your humility and me thinking, could I have pulled that off? Could I keep my mouth shut and not defend Francis Chan? Because I love Francis so much. No, the way you love Jesus and said, I just want his name lifted up. That humility, knowing your prayer life already, of how much time you spend with him and you saw when you preached about the love of christ and i was supposed to preach after you i tore my shirt literally and just said i am not speaking after that i'm getting on my knees and repenting and so when i see your study of the word your commitment to prayer and the humility in your life and the character the sacrifice i hear from all of your staff it makes a guy like me go, well, then why would I think I'm right? I, I, I almost feel safer going with whatever Mike believes. Um, and, and so, Bill, everything you share, just, ah, uh, I just want to uh, apologize, even though I don't think I slammed you directly. <laughs> I know I did Mike. But uh, I just, I still feel like, it makes me sick um some of the things that i've said and i really believe i i was even praying this afternoon god please help me feel how displeased you were with that i don't want this to be like oh isn't francis humble he just told them how he screwed up no i'm going god i hurt you i hurt the body by that 
and I want to feel it. Not to not to condemn myself or anything like that, but I just don't want this to be like, oh, what a beautiful thing he recognized his wrong. No, I want people to understand that was damaging to the body of Christ. And I thank God for men like you, that the Holy Spirit has clearly given you a grace to take that with a humility and love and accept people like me in spite of what I've done. And I just want to tell you guys, I love you. I'll fix your theology later. For now, <laughs> just know I really do love you guys, and I am thrilled to be on your team. Thank you so much. Um, my dad was uh, a, a great man of honor. He, uh, I, I remember being in the church here, actually, Bethel in Reading, when there was a, a big church split, which uh, uh, is all too common. And uh, our sanctuary seated uh, 600, 600 plus people. And the Sunday following this major split, there was, I think it was 65 people in the building. And it's pretty devastating uh, for anyone to go through that kind of trauma. Uh, pastors, uh, we are some of the strangest people on the planet uh, because we were sad when people who hate us leave. But uh, it's, it's kind of an awkward thing, but it's, it's really true. And, uh, but my dad lived with such incredible honor towards those who had spoken so evil of him. They would do so many horrible things, things you just wouldn't believe. And yet he, he kept those doors open, and he, he, really, he really loved them. He really cared for them. And I was so moved some years later, the ringleader, of this uh, great uh, act of division, uh, the ringleader came back to my dad some years later and, and said, uh, said, my wife is dying, would you pray for her? And so my dad uh, went to the hospital, visited with her, visited with him, and there was just incredible reconciliation just because my, my dad honestly kept the door open through honor. And uh, I, I never heard him uh, I, I never heard my mom or dad ever speak evil of another person. And um, so when this woman uh, passed away, uh, this man asked my dad to do the funeral. It, it may seem like a, a small thing to so many people, but when, when you're in that kind of a heated conflict and the very people that caused it come back to you, and they want you to be a part of the most painful part of their life. It speaks so profoundly of, um, of the importance of honor. And it, it doesn't mean that people will always return. It doesn't mean that they'll always come back and repent and reconcile. But what it does mean is, is like Paul says, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Make sure that you've done everything on your end of the equation to be at peace with everyone. And um, it's just the great uh, privilege of life. I, I for one, I, I like taking communion a lot. I do it most every day. And I, I pray through a number of things for my entire family, my children, of course, my grandchildren. Pray for uh, friends uh, when I hold the broken body of the Lord. I pray for those uh, who are suffering and, uh, and declare. I like to make proclamations. I declare that by his stripes we were healed. And I pray for that miracle of healing to be released into people's bodies. And, uh, but one of the things that brings me the greatest joy is all of us have people that we know have said uh, critical things of us. One of the things I like to do in, in communion, you see Jesus bore on his body the wall of division between Jew and Gentile. He took the sting out of it, he broke its power. And so I like to pray 
for where I know there's conflict. And specifically, there are five men in my life who have, uh, who speak evil of me uh, in their conferences and books and of these men. And I, I pray for the bounty of the Lord to come on their lives. I ask for his, his, um, his prosperity to, to fill their life inside and out, spirit, soul, and body. And then my, my greatest delight is to pray that God would honor their life with children and grandchildren that would love him well, that would serve him well, they would have the privilege, the privilege they would have the, the, the privilege of a rich, rich legacy. And the scripture says, you're never to criticize a servant to their master. And I have no right uh, to bring a complaint I have no right to bring a complaint to the father about one of his kids. And so I, I like to contribute to their lives the best I know how with supportive prayer. And uh, you know, the, the greatest th thrill of my life is my children and my 10 grandchildren soon to be 11, watching them love Jesus is, is the greatest thrill. So that's what I pray. I pray for these, these who have uh, 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 opposed me. I pray for them. I, I just, I, I take the moment knowing that uh, they need mercy just like I do. I need the mercy of God constantly. And so, that's that's my that's my approach. That's my contribution uh, to this. This is this is what uh, this is a huge part of what drives my life. I uh, one one last thing I'll, I'll I'll mention that I I mentioned the other day. I I was going through Charisma magazine. Um, Oh, it's probably been uh, two or three years ago now. Uh, I enjoy the magazine. Uh, Stephen Strang is a wonderful friend. And, and a lot of uh, people that I know write uh, for the magazine. And it's, it's just enjoyable for me. And I was, I was just skimming through. Uh, just It had arrived in the mail. And I was just skimming through the magazine. And I, uh, of course, there's a lot of advertisements for books. There's a lot of advertisements for conferences. And I would glance at the conference and there would be five or six uh, people that some I would know, some I just knew about. And some um, I, I felt really indifferent towards. Uh, suspicious might be one word. I, I know, I, I think I know enough not to think critical thoughts of these individuals or to move in suspicion towards them. But I could feel that indifference. And that indifference was insulating me from, from real love. Uh, I, I don't want to make this dramatic. I just went through the magazine. And when I, when I got to the end of the magazine, I had this sad feeling in my heart that I, had, um, I was indifferent towards these people. And it was because in the back of my mind, I was suspicious. And, um, uh, you know, all of us like authenticity. And I, I think I was just questioning uh, some of their authenticity, which I'm ashamed of. So I went back to the beginning of the magazine. And I came to the first advertisement for a conference. And there's, you know, five or six speakers. And I, I just stared at each picture until I could feel the pleasure of the Lord for them. And when I, when I could feel his pleasure, his delight in who they were, 
Then I went to the next picture. And then I went to the next one. It took me a while to get through the magazine, but I, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to move on and let that be a part of my life. Where there could be this, this hidden suspicion that would, I guess if I gave place to it, it would accuse people and all kinds of things. And I, 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 I felt so horrible that that was there. So I went through the entire magazine until I could truly feel his delight, his pleasure over each, uh, each person. And um, I, I'm, I'm thankful. I'm, I'm thankful for that personal victory. My dad was such a great model of celebrating diversity in the church. He, um, he, he didn't tolerate it. He truly celebrated uniqueness and diversity. He would have so many people that were so different than we were in our stream. Randy Clark has a great statement. He says, every, every stream thinks they're the river. And uh, that is so true. But my dad just did a wonderful job of celebrating the uniqueness of the whole body of Christ. And, uh, and I'm, I'm trying to follow his lead and celebrate truly who people are in Christ and valuing what each uh, member brings uh, to the table. So my connection is very unstable. I, I, don't, I don't know if you can hear me or not. It feels like I may be fading in and out, but uh, I'll, I'll end it right there. I'll end we can it hear you, Bill. You we can. can hear you. Okay. Yeah, continue. All right. Well, I just, uh, I just uh, want to say thank you for to you and to uh, all of you that are on this panel. Just the fact that you, you still love and honor one another, including me, is such a such a joy, because this is uh, this is what we we live for. We live for the beauty of the bride uh, to be seen, the beauty of his church. And, uh, and you all contribute so richly. I'm so moved by the, the courage of Francis. I, I've just been really rocked by, by your life. And, and uh, I'm, so, I'm so thankful for your living, broad, uh, a bold proclamation of who Jesus is. I am just so thrilled with you. Mike, you, uh, I've, I've told our students, they'll ask me, what do you think of Mike Bickle? I say, he's one of the most important people alive. Uh, anybody who gives their life to prayer are my absolute all-time heroes. And uh, I'm, I'm so thankful uh, for you. I really am. Asher, I just have gotten to know you a little bit through this, uh, this Zoom call, but I'm so appreciative of your voice and uh, what you carry uh, for the body of Christ. David, you've been a friend for a number of years. I'm thankful for you and the, the charge that you lead in bringing healing, reconciliation, unity. Uh, you're a great, great voice and a great friend. I appreciate you. Tabitha, you have a wonderful gift. Thank you. Thank you so much for your kindness and for shining in the love of Jesus. It's a beautiful. Happy. Because just before the cross, before Jesus was crucified, the disciples were fighting. Who was on the right side, who was on the left side, and even the mother entered into that discussion. And the Lord said, how can I trust Pentecost to this way? And that's the 40 days. And that's the 10 days in the upper room. And the Lord prepared them and they came into that oneness, one accord. He brought them into, because the kingdom is not going to be divided. It's one kingdom, one body, one head. And if the kingdom is divided, it will not stand. And that's what we have, real, we have not really understood. That in our defend 
defending of the truth and the things we have hurt the Lord's heart. It's when two of my kids are fighting. And then I know who's right and who's wrong. But they don't understand that my heart is broken as a father because my kids are fighting. And, and sometimes I say, if, if, they can, if they can just get it, my heart is broken over my kids. And especially we go to the table and they don't connect honorably because we have the dinner and my kids are divided. It's, it's, it's hard for the father. It's very hard. And I, I am praying that 2020, this season that we're in, that the Lord is bringing us to feel his heart, his heartbeat. All of us have done well. Let me share the story. It's very interesting. I was not planning on sharing it. Years ago, when, uh, when I was in medical school, my dad, uh, my dad is in heaven now. He was a school principal. And uh, he always wanted us to do well. So I did very well. My, my, my sister, my two brothers, we all wanted to excel in our study because that will bring pleasure to my father's heart. And when, when I do well, uh, my father uh, uh, my father will be excited for a week talking about, you know, the culture in the Middle East. It's like my parents live for the kids. So we are the joy of their heart. So my father will speak about it. Oh, look at what my son has done. So one time I had an amazing mark. So I was waiting for dinner time and I sat with my, my family. And I said, dad, I have good news for you. So I started sharing the good news about my marks. And my dad was very happy. Few, few seconds later, few minutes later, his heart changed. And I could feel there is sadness over his heart. I wondered, what have I done? I know this is not my dad. My dad never, ever. He can stay a week excited for news like this. And now he cannot wait until the end of the dinner. And I thought I had done something wrong. We finished dinner, I ran into the uh, kitchen, went to my mom, mom, what's wrong with my dad? She said, nothing wrong. I said, no, I know my dad. Have I done anything wrong? She said, no. I said, I know my dad will, a week, he will rejoice over these marks. What's wrong with my dad? She said to me, okay, I'll tell you, your two brothers had a fight today. And I never understood the heart of the father. My marks were a joy for a few, few, few minutes. But when the family is divided, there is no way the heart of my father will be glad. And the Lord said to me, and I learned that lesson, David, your success your achievement your whatever you do you have a big church you have all these people saved you have all these things that you're doing it brings joy to my heart but temporarily because when my children are divided my heart is broken and i i feel maybe this is a time where the there is a mending of the Lord's heart. And I wanted to say to all the people are hearing, I know maybe you have done amazing. You have served the Lord very well. You have done amazing. Many people got saved. Teaching was proper and everything. And the heart of the Father is, is glad over what you do. But I want to invite you to understand the Father's heart. You will never enjoy a dinner if the children are divided, fighting one another, competing, comparing, jealous. And he is coming for a bride. He's preparing us and the preparation, it might be different than what we thought. It's not about more teaching more. It's about getting his children 